A single thread is unique. Like each of us, full of purpose and potential. A strand designed to connect, strengthen, and unite. But we face different challenges and have different opportunities. By acknowledging that others may struggle in ways we do not, we can celebrate our differences, embrace each other, and fortify the ties among us. A single thread can fray, yet when it's woven with another, a bond forms, a new strength created by the fabric of the whole. Let's embrace the fabric we make together, the diversity of our threads, to reach beyond ourselves and overcome the impossible. The true power of our game comes from unifying our individual backgrounds, connecting our unique stories, enabling us to be stronger, braver, greater. We can achieve so much more when we are all as one. I believe sportsmanship is a it's a mutual admiration and respect for your fellow competitors. We all go through a lot to reach the point where we compete against one another. It's important to realize that. So once we're finally on the field or on the court or on the starting block, we look at each other as fellow human beings and not just competitors. Being able to recognize the hard work that other athletes are putting in creates a more positive and inclusive environment. Continue to take pride and learn from Asa Mahan's leadership today. And the slam! 161 years of commitment to harnessing the power of creativity, ingenuity, community, and academic excellence. I believe that if you get your degree here, the world is going to feel like it's shrinking.
A Saturday showdown that is sure to leave a mark on two programs as they look to continue their pursuit for a national title. Inside the Arrington Ice Arena, we are live for this quarterfinal matchup between the St. Norbert College Green Knights and your Adrian College Bulldogs. Hello, everyone. My name is Alex Herman, joined alongside by Tyler Ackerman. You can feel it in the air. There is so much buzz and excitement around this game here this evening. Let's talk about the Green Knights first. Coming into the game, 23-6-0 overall. Sixth in the nation, that's pretty good. 5-0-0 in the last five. They beat St. Olaf 5-2 in the first round of the NCAA tournament to get to this game that we're having here tonight. They won the Harris Cup over the hometown Adrian College Bulldogs by a score of 3-1 to qualify for this tournament. So a little bit of bragging rights going into this game. This is the fourth time these two teams are seeing each other in just about a month. They split the first season, the first series in the regular season, but proved that they could hang around. They gave the dogs a difficult time in the Harris Cup Finals. Hunter Garvey really aided in that effort this season. He has a 181 GAA, a 924 save percentage, 19-3-0 on the season. Adam Stacho in his line, the most points for the Green Knights. He's got 19 goals, 24 assists for a nice 43 points. Who else should we look out for here? from St. Norbert. Well, we're going to talk about the back end as Dana Deeks. Number three, he's got 17 points in 28 games played for St. Norbert. He, every single thing, every single goal or opportunity comes from him. Absolutely. Now let's take a look at the Bulldogs. 23-6-1 overall, third in the country. 4-1-0 in the last five. They beat Wisconsin Stevens Point in the first round 4-0. The only loss in that stretch was to St. Norbert right here in the Harris Cup Finals. But the positive thing is that they're a hungry team after that loss, and it really solidified their depth after that first round win against Stevens Point. They need to apply the pressure early. Their Sean Stewart has heavily contributed to the season's success. A 173 GAA, 937 save percentage, 19-6-1. Jaden Shields has been a scoring threat all season long with 11 goals, 27 assists, and a 38 points. Who else do the Bulldogs have to look for? that are going to need to come up large in this game here today. I mean, I just look at their first line. You got Redding, you got Summers, and you got Heinze. Heinze and Reddy, Redding have seven-plus game point streaks. They got to keep it hot if they want to win this game tonight. All right, we'll take two ice surface to take a look at the starting lineups for both sides, starting off for the St. Norbert Green Knights. We have Will Stromp, Charter Hotman, TJ Kofis, Dayton Deeks, Mark Snarr, and in the back end, it's going to be Hunter Garvey on the other side for the Bulldogs. It's going to be Ian Amsbaugh, Jake Swade, Riley Murphy, Austin Klein, and Matt Kudo. Their Sean Stewart will get the nod here tonight as per usual. Now, season on the line. A chance to head to the Frozen Four, continuing your season in hot pursuit for a national title. Alex Herman and Tyler Ackerman don't go anywhere. First period coming up. You're watching the NCAA playoffs on Adrian College TV.
Welcome back inside the Arrington Ice Arena. Season on the line for these two teams. It's the St. Norbert Green Knights and your Adrian College Bulldogs. Hello everyone, my name is Alex Herman, joined alongside by Tyler Ackerman. Both of these teams looking to continue their seasons to try and find their way back into the national title picture. Just one year ago, it was the Bulldogs who were able to top Wisconsin Stevens Point right here at the Arrington Ice Arena. In their quarterfinal matchup in overtime, Matu Spodniak was able to pot the OT winner to help them move on to the next round. St. Norbert was able to get into the tournament in the first place this season right here from the AIA. They beat the Adrian College Bulldogs in the Harris Cup final. This is surely going to be a very fun one. Two teams who have a lot of history. It's going to be a showdown here from Adrian, Michigan. 20 minutes up on the score clock. Everybody gathered at center. Delay on the draw just for a moment. Puck is dropped, and we are underway from the AIA. It's the quarterfinal round in the NCAA Division III tournament. The St. Norbert Green Knights win the opening draw. This pass will send up for Kofis. Here's a quick chance off the bar. They score. What a shot. 15 seconds in. The Green Knights have struck early. It's one to nothing. This year, Herm just seemed like it was just a broken play. Nothing much about it. And all of a sudden, it's just a quick two on one. And Hotman just takes an absolute ripper. Bar down. That is just, what a snipe, what a start from the Green Knights. First shot, first goal. Carter Hotman saying, let's play some hockey. And that's the unpredictability of playoffs for you. A let's go Bulldogs fan chant coming from the crowd here at the Arrington Ice Arena. Looking to re-energize their home squad. Green Knights move up ice. This is Frazier to the outside. Circles around, wraparound attempt, stopped by the pad of Stewart. Kept going at the left blue, that was Gilman, who will push it back down low. Tie up in the corner, a Denier right there. They'll try and take a check. Here's a quick save from Stewart as he blockered it aside. Push towards the corner, now at the top. This will get out on the stick of Redding. Gets to the red, dumps it all the way down. This will skim around, Swade picks it up will swing it back to the opposite end. Pick up on the corner. Breakout pending for the Green Knights. This is Jake Swade on his own blue. Races his way up, turns on the Jets. Some nice speed, but a poke check cancels his attempt. Shields, left point, dumps it down. Here's Amsball underneath the red, on the backhand. To the front, nobody there to catch the pass. A pull-up move, unsuccessful from Gustav Portillo. And icing, or offsides is called at 18.26 into the first period. Can't ask for a better start from St. Norbert than scoring your first shot 15 seconds in. It's definitely what they want. It's best case scenario for the Green Knights. Bulldogs need to get something going. And it's surprising too, because you don't see a lot of those shots beat Deshaun Stewart quickly. But that was a fast, hard, and accurate snapshot from just on top of the circle as the Bulldogs will get whistled for offsides here. And in Stewart's credit, too, you're facing your first shot in the quarterfinals, and it's a snipe. I mean, that thing went bar down, and it was quick, too. Nothing really much you can do. That thing came from maybe the hash marks as well. It's really tough as a goaltender for that to be your first shot on net. We'll see how this game continues on, neutral zone draw as it's dumped in, played off the backboard. Along the wall, it's Vellucci. Tied up with May, trying to slap for it. Breaks free. This is Babiak to Gerstein. Had a big goal last weekend against Stevens Point. A two on one on the rush. As this is picked up and sent forward, from the captain now to TJ Kofis. Breaking in, shoulder save from Stewart. Odd angle. Don't know if he fully saw it come off the blade. But we'll get a piece of it, redirected to the corner. Play translating to the opposite end. Kofis once more will lead the rush. 
skating through neutral, shakes around. A Dinier right there to angle him into the boards. Here's Potosha. Kaljan with a body check along the boards. Here's Kaljan down low, looking in front, poking for it. Potosha fanned on his shot, had an opportunity in the slot. Here's a good feed. Speeding forward, here come the Green Knights once again. That wrist shot stopped by a stick in front. It was Liam Frazier who tried to rip it home. Bounced to the left blue. Now Jordan Strand couldn't hold on to it. it was Brian Gilman. Loretta will restart. Looking for Dinier, played off the glass. Heinz couldn't break through. Here's Summers with some space. Shakes around Jordan Strand. Towards the wall, Shields will have to backpedal. Heinz breaks the play up. Jacob with a long pass forward. A one touch to Heinz. Redding lost his feet. And unfortunately, the Bulldogs again off sides. We've seen a couple now. The Bulldogs just not being able to enter the zone cleanly. And it's kind of been hurting them as they've had zero shots on net so far. Other than really able to test the goaltender. Carter Hotman, 15 seconds in. For those of you just joining us now, the opening goal in this quarterfinal matchup. Only scored eight goals during the regular season as coming up with a quick glove save will be Hunter Garvey. That was a high chance scoring opportunity right there. And Garvey just made it look simple with a flash of the glove. Hunter Garvey, the last time that the Bulldogs and the Green Knights faced off against one another. Came up really big in that game, made a whole bunch of saves, and kept the contest to a three to one affair. Ultimately earning his squad the Harris Cup and a trip to these NCAA playoffs. If they had lost, their season would have been over. So a big contributing factor to this team's story. Hunter Garvey, the freshman, playing the majority of the games this season. Stromp, fans on his pass, it's kept in. Redding overskated it, tried to play it on the backhand. Will swing it back for Shields. He'll skate forward, pulls up, taken off his stick. Am's ball touched up beyond the blue line again. Offsides the whistle at 15.39 left to go in the first period. You've seen a little bit of a switch of momentum. It was all Norbert to start, and now Adrian has kind of controlled the pace Getting back to what they would like to call their playing style in their game. Back to center. Babiak rips it in. Kudo to chase after it along the wall. Amsball with a shot that was well wide. Footed away as Kudo will play the jumper. Babiak to Amsball. Along the left wall. Now to the middle. Here's Swade. Back to Kudo. Fires. That's up and into the netting. Bulldogs will get the offensive zone draw. We'll see what their selection is on which side it'll be. And it looks like it will be on our right. So far side right corner, Bulldogs to the O-zone draw. Stepping in for the Green Knights, it's Liam Frazier and Jacob Swade. Both players wearing the number 12 on their sweaters respectively. Swade wins it back. Babiak to Amsball. Far point shot in the chest of Garvey. He holds on. That's a good chance from the point. Looking to find a redirection in front. Yeah, it was a set play by the Bulldogs. Amsbarrow is able to sneak out to the side. Looking for the one timer pass, wasn't available. And we get a whistle. Here's Kudo. Fires blocked in front. Stepping in the lane was Adam Stacho. Kudo. Back up, Amsbo will play it back. Kudo to Murphy, now to Amsbo. Wraps around the left half wall. Stopped on the dot. A takeaway from Dombrowski. Move down low, Murphy's in front, sliding it over. A stick swiped it away, that was Dayton Deeks. And Babiak steps up with a hit at center. This is all the way down for icing. And the Green Knights lobbying that there should be no call. I think also the fans were looking for too many men as the bench of the Green Knights were a little bit confused on who 
was going out. But they figured it out. I love that matchup. Two top lines for the Green Knights and the Adrian Bulldogs going at it. Looked like Murphy and the squad was able to control most of that shift, but it's going to be a good one for the rest of the game. 14-39 in the first period. The draw is changed now to center. The officials change their minds. Alex Herman and Tyler Ackerman, you're watching the NCAA playoffs on the Adrian College Sports Network. Connor May will step in for the draw with Braden Lidstrom. Delay on the dropping. And finally, we continue on. It's one back by Lidstrom. Dumped in on the far side by Black. Stewart to play it with the backhand will retreat back to his blue paints. Brock Baker deep in the zone. Here's a point shot and a glove save from Stewart. He'll get some applause and praise from the Arrington faithful. I like the positioning of 26 Portillo right there in that shift. He was just trying to kind of sit in that no man's land of kind of the center of the ice. There was a pass that went to him. It did not connect to him, but... If you're looking to score goals, want to find the soft areas of the ice and be able to capitalize on those opportunities. Gustav Portillo, one of the larger skaters for the Green Knights squad, sits at six foot five, 230 pounds from Gothenburg, Sweden. Unrelated to the game, the younger brother of current LA Kings goaltender, Eric Portillo, formerly of the University of Michigan at the NCAA Division I level. So high level hockey running in the family for the Portillos, as this is Potosha who will skate up the right wing. Checked hard into the boards as he lost control of the puck. Green Knights dominating so far, just about six minutes in. Klein behind the play, gets this off for Kudo. A one touch for Potosha. He'll make his approach, crosses over Blue. Now to Kaljan, the big captain, trying to lead his squad to another victory. Kaljan handcuffed along the wall. A takeaway made here by Hartley as he'll skate up the wall. Tips it off the boards and it's all the way down. Klein, the last man back, being pressured by Hartley. Forced to make a play. Kudo connects with Potosha, who's way up ice. Now to Redding. He makes a move to the middle and it's checked off of his stick. Couldn't hold on to it. Tried to drive that center lane but couldn't get it done. A dump in once more from Hartley who will now decide to change is replaced by Dombrowski. Redding off to Heinz, looking to hit Summers, broken up in front of him. That was Michael Black. Off to the wall and Dombrowski. In the middle now it's Julian Jacob. Scanning the surface, makes a shifty move. Crisscrosses from right to left. Jacob with a shot and playing the ground ball will be Hunter Garvey as he makes his third stop at the 12.39 mark in the first. I love Jacob's confidence there. It's a big game. He's able just to weave his way kind of through. I mean, even as a freshman, having that much confidence into a big game like this, being able to get that good shot off and then get a good zone draw for the Bulldogs. Face off on the left. Jacob Swade and Liam Frazier once more will go one-on-one. -on -one. And Swade wins it back again. Shields to Murphy, a bad save from Garvey. Just barely got it with the toe. The rebound was right there. Swade almost got a stick on that. He had a wide open net if he was able to tip that one in. And I think that's what's important for this Bulldog squad. You're not gonna find pucks in the back of the net on straight shots. I'd like to say that the Green Knights got lucky with their scoring opportunity, but they'll have to create traffic. Here's a long shot. Garvey didn't see it, but it was released by Jacob. Shields will dump it back down low. Swade trying to go through his legs to Ansbo, who will come in and help him out. Two on two in the left side corner. Plays to the middle and Frazier. Now for Dombrowski. Back to Frazier. Takes a step. Goes one on one with Jacob. Far side hash mark. Here's Murphy. Has Ansbo. They go back and forth. A nice move and a takedown. Here's Ansbo. Waits. What a move. And he scores. Ian Amsbaugh! We're tied up at one! Uh, you want to talk about having patience? 
Ian Ansbaugh, my goodness. And he just waits, 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 gets the goalie down and just tucks it. Oh my goodness. Big play from Ian Ansbaugh to make this game all tied up at once. A momentum shift here in this contest. 11.43 in. We're back to a square game. Ian Amsbaugh, what a move and what a goal. Like you said, the patience on full display. Green Knights right back to the attack. Here's a point drive off the stick of Deeks. Settles well wide, a slap shot fluttering over the top. Stewart extends the glove. And you hear it from the crowd. They are back and fighting in this one. I feel like it almost was a wake up call that first goal for the Bulldogs. They seemed a little bit too nonchalant into their play in the first 15 seconds they get scored on. And now they've just been able to put down the pedal these last couple of minutes here. 11.27 in the first. Connor May can't get the draw as it's kicked back to the top of the circle. That was made by Will Stromp. Here's Lovasek. Gerstein right there with him. Gets it. Fires well wide. Will skim around to the top in Adinie. Puts it back down low for Gerstein. Makes a play to the front. Oh, it was right there on the stick of Alec Lovasek. Here's a rebound. Kicked out by Garvey. Bulldogs are barking. Lovasek to May. Angled into the boards. Loretto trying to keep it going desperately. He'll punch for it there. Can't get the puck off the stick, but finally it's carried away by Lovasek. You hear the announcement for the last goal. Ian Amsball getting things back to an even game. Down low. Moved over horizontally. Babyak feeds one in front. Hit off a stick and just dribbled wide. Here's some speed from Hansen. Babyak stopping that rush. Rimmed around to the top. Stepping off the blue is Hartley. Gets supported by Strand. This is Potosha. Speeding on the wing was Troon. He's ahead of the play. Tips it in. We continue. Nice hit from Calgin along the wall. Crossed the 10 minute threshold halfway through this first period. One to one. Adrian College Bulldogs and the St. Norbert Green Knights on the Adrian College Sports Network. Cooper Morris. A missed pass. Will be recollected by Shields. Touched at center by Potosha. Calgin. Flutters it down low. It'll wrap around the kick plate. Settling in the corner. Both sides jockeying for it. You see Shields up top of the blue waiting for a feed. We saw him in the last game against Stevens Point. Hammer one just from a couple feet closer to the net. So you have to expect you got to look out for him. Especially with him being so hot recently. Here's a point shot. Stewart with the save. Got it with the glove. We see many opportunities now that Shields have been calling for the puck. It seems as Norbert hasn't been able to like necessarily block him in a way as he's been able to kind of sneak in, had some decent opportunities, just not able to get the puck in the last couple of plays. Adrian College has turned this period around from a shocking start 15 seconds into the first. For those of you just tuning in now, Austin Klein off for Redding, slaps it forward for Heinz, dropped through his legs, nobody there to catch his pass, went two for three. Adrian Collins looking to move forward. Summers hit hard into the boards. Stepping up there was Gilman. Kudo. Tied in the corner. Summers takes a stumble. Heinz with a great play before the puck got out. Summers, again, fighting for it in the far side corner. Here's a takeaway from Lindstrom. Slowly bringing it up was Baker, who dumps it in. Stewart will slice it over on the backhand. Here's a chance for Amsball. Fires, blocker save from Garvey. 
Nice hit there on the wall by Swade. Here's another chance from Swade, blocker to side. Moved back to the top and Julian Jacob fires. Sticked away from Garvey. Looks like he's in a little bit of discomfort. Didn't see any contact or anything out of the ordinary, but Swade keeps things going. The AIA loves it. Shields off to Swade. Swade wrapping around, gets to Shields, looking for a lane, steps through, dribbling puck. Where is it? It's on the line, it stays out. Oh, it was that close to going in. It got tipped through the five hole of Garvey and somehow, some way, it stayed out. We take the pause with 7.29 left to go in the first. I think, I think it was Strand that took that thing off the goal line, Herms. I don't know how that puck did not go into the net. The AIA all thought it was in, but somehow that puck stays out. And we're still tied up at once. Adrian College Bulldogs are putting on the pressure. Nine to six, the shots at the 729 spot here in the first period. Three on two situation. Green Knights move up. Advancing forward, looking for a pass in front was Dombrowski. Back behind the play is Frazier. Touches up down low. Troon with a slapper that gets out. This might be icing. And indeed it is. Winning the race is Adam Schubert. Man, that Harsbaugh, Swade, and Murphy line has been buzzing so far in this game. Uh, Green Knights just trying to put out their first line, trying to get some momentum back into this game. They've had a little bit of offensive zone pressure as they get the draw from the icing. And not to take away from the game going on, but other Adrian College news. The women's ACHA Division I team trying to find their first national championship as Deshaun Stewart makes a save there, has defeated number two Midland in the ACHA Women's Division I semifinal to play for a national championship tomorrow. So a massive good luck out to the Lady Dogs as they look to close out their season on a high note. It would be great to have men's Acha one win a national championship and Acha Wacha one for women's also win a national championship. For those unfamiliar, earlier this week, men's ACHA Division I beat the University of Las Vegas, Nevada to win their third national championship in the past six years. Nonetheless, we continue on as we still have action here at the AAA. Adinia dumped it in, but it looked like it caromed either off the netting or into the bench area for a moment, so we'll restart and take the draw at center ice underneath the overhanging scoreboard. 6.37 left to go here in the first period. Watching and listening to the NCAA quarterfinals on the Adrian College Sports Network. Connor May jostles for it but can't get the win on the draw. Mark Snar dumps it in. A bouncing puck evades the grasp of their Sean Stewart. This is Ben Loretto. Tried to hustle a feed forwards. Driven back to the top, here's Hillman. His shot was blocked. Kept it going, long drive, broken stick down on the play. That was Portillo who lost his twig. Adinier got lucky without a penalty there. He slashed Portillo's stick right in front of the ref. Did not catch this that one, but good eyes from you, Tyler. Nonetheless, no penalty, we continue. Here's Lovasek. Trying to move it through some legs. Love a sec to Heinz. Moves his way in. Save from Garvey. It's in the slot and taken out. Coming the other way is Tromp. Moves it over for Kofis. Centering a feed over. No dice. Redding connects with Klein. Three on two if they can move fast. Klein over. Where is it? It's underneath the red. Hit somebody in front. Almost took a fortuitous bounce. Was very close to catching some iron. Here's a shot to the middle. Oh, off the iron was Summers. It stayed out. Summers with a one-knee slap shot in the slot. That close to making it a two-to-one affair. Good pressure here in the late stages. Klein moves in. Blocker from Garvey. 
Klein to Summers. Back to Redding. Waits. Moving in deeper. Heads down low. Skims it up the boards. It's out. And Babiak will have to play it, and it gives time for the Green Knights to make a change. Redding touched it just before the blue line, so it'll be no icing on the dump-in. Jordan Strand sent a pass way up. It jumped over the stick of Shields, and this will be icing. We'll stop with 4.35 left to go in the first period. One-to-one -one hockey game between the St. Norbert Green Knights and the Adrian College Bulldogs. Could have been easily two to one. That shot didn't ring off the crossbar. These last two minutes have been absolutely exhilarating for the fans here at the AIA as they are cheering upon their Bulldogs as they continue to put on the pressure to the Green Knights. Swade and Frazier. Seen it a couple of times this time. It's Frazier who wins it. This pass up the ice. Jacob gets it right there. Will send it in. Caresses it along the half wall. Here's Murphy. Off for Amsbaugh. Crosses over the blue. Shields behind him. Will pirouette backwards. And will head man the blue line with his deep partner in Julian Jacob as he dumps it all the way down deep. Amsball couldn't pressure because there was a delayed offsides and a pass almost for a breakaway. Stewart has to play it. Sherry picking behind the play was Byron Hartley. Both defensemen went on for a change. There. Oh, a big hit on Swede. Laying down the body was Schubert. Here's Amsball moving in. Shoulder to side by Garvey. And a hit after the whistle. We got a little bit of a scuffle underneath the red line. Apologies for cutting you off there, Tyler. Well, all I was going to say is that both defensemen, Shields and Jacobs, both went off the ice expecting the Bulldogs to put a little bit of pressure, but it was delayed off sides. So the Green Knights had a high chance to have a good scoring opportunity for themselves, but the pass just did not connect. Shots 11 to 7. Here in the late stages of the first period, 3.38 remaining in the first. Things still knotted at one apiece. You hear the cheers from the crowd. Two goals so far, Carter Hotman at the 14 second mark and Ian Amsbaugh at the 8.18 spot. That's what leaves us at a tie game. Matt Kudo racing back after it. Pressured hard into the right corner. Klein along the far side. Shovels forward. Patosha. He's got a step in Calgin with him on the left. The slaps around Patosha. Keeps it in. Kudo will step off the blue. Klein will wait on the blue line for him. Patosha also helping out. Kudo retreats. Out of the zone are the Green Knights. Now it's Brock Baker. Trying to move into position are the Adrian College Bulldogs. Gerstein with a backhander that got tipped at center, so there'll be no icing. Slapped up the boards, met by Hotman. Has the only goal for the Green Knights. A nice move, jumping around there, possible shot. Some good theatrics from TJ Kofis. Went with the windmill deke. Lovasek on the faceoff dot. Adinier ties up his man down low. Plays to the top of the point. Deeks fires. Blocked by Lovasek. Got it cleanly with the stick. Not easy to stop a speeding puck like that. Only with one hand on your twig. I'm surprised they didn't lose his twig or it didn't break. Here's Lovasek. Has May. Lovasek moves in. Saved by Garvey. Got it with the glove. Now to the front. Gerstein waiting for a chance. Jacob with a shot. And gloving it down for the whistle is Hunter Garvey once more. 1.52 remaining in the first period. NCAA quarterfinal hockey right here on the Adrian College Sports Network. This has been an exciting one so far. And this is exactly what we expected too. Yeah, we have uh, both top lines going out of here. So there should be a good couple of shifts here. Under two minutes to play in the first stanza. Julian Jacob. Plays it ahead for Summers. 
taken from him by Bo Buckley. Here's a developing situation as it stopped swiftly and moved back towards the opposite blue line. Here's a step. Stacho moves in. Stewart. Don't know if he got a piece of it, but it stayed out. Snar. Wraps it high to low. Heinz trying to tip it out of midair. Just barely plays it forward, but can't control it. Dombrowski pulls up, drops back for Frazier. Heinz with a nice stick check. Maybe one more rush here. Redding dancing around, stopped once more. St. Norbert doing a great job at shutting down the rushes straight off the entry on the blue line. They're definitely keeping Adrian in line. This is Baker scanning. Trying to find the right pass. Can't get it done. Amsball steals it. Looking to advance it forward. Now it's Hammond. A takeaway. Here's Swade. Caught the Green Knights in a change. Amsball right back after it. Too much pressure on the puck. 23 seconds left to go. Carrying it ahead is Baker. Distributes to Lindstrom. Softly dumps it in. Klein, oh, almost gave it away there. He was trying to spin with the pass. Swade will help him out. Kudo will take it to the opposite corner. It goes off the glass. Glove down. Maybe one last shot if they can take it. Swade getting it out. Two seconds and one. That'll do it for the first 20 minutes. A nail biter that one was. Man, oh man. Nothing more to say other than that's playoff hockey. We touched on it a little bit at the start of the period when the Green Knights open up the scoring just 15 seconds in. But playoffs are so unpredictable you can never really figure out what's gonna happen. And I don't think anybody had a 15 second goal on their no. bingo sheet. But what a shot that was from Carter Hopman to get things going at the 15 second mark. Shortly after that, at the 8-18, Ian Amsbaugh with the patience as you said earlier, Tyler. What did you see after 20 minutes? I mean, I see, we talked about it a little bit right there. The Ansbo, Swade, and Murphy line have been cooking. I mean, Krug has been putting them out a lot. They've gotten a lot of ice time in this first 20, and they have been able to keep the puck in zone, in the offensive zone, and able to create great opportunities as well. If I'm St. Norbert, I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing. They started off hot. They kind of retreat a little bit. They're going to have a nice talk in the locker room, look to get another quick start like they had in the first. What do you think about some of the shot selection from St. Norbert? Because for me, what it feels like is when they throw pucks on net, it's very calculated, and you can tell they're trying to have specific plays develop in the offensive zone. You saw a couple of those opportunities maybe catch Sean Stewart by surprise, which is a little bit out of the ordinary because typically he's got great eyes on the puck as long as he can see it. What do you think the St. Norbert Green Knights are going to have to do to continue their offensive firepower? I mean, you touched on it, shots on net. And you also got a crash in that as well. Stewart is wonderful in net. The way you score on him is either a snipe that you saw or crashing net and getting dirty. You know, the way to score goals in a game like this is to bear down in front of the net and finish the pucks. And St. Norbert's going to have to find those type of goals and be able to deal with the Adrian offense knacking at them. All right, 20 minutes gone. Took a little bit of time for the Adrian College Bulldogs to respond, but it was Ian Amsball with the equalizer to make this a one-to-one -one hockey game. Alex Herman and Tyler Ackerman don't go anywhere. We'll take a short break for the Zamboni resurfacing, and we'll come right back for the start of the second period. You're listening to and watching the NCAA playoffs on the Adrian College Sports Network. A single thread is unique, like each of us, full of purpose and potential. A strand designed to connect, strengthen, and unite. But we face different challenges and have different opportunities. By acknowledging that others may struggle in ways we do not, we can celebrate our differences, embrace each other, and fortify the ties among us. A 
single thread can fray. Yet when it's woven with another, a bond forms. A new strength created by the fabric of the whole. Let's embrace the fabric we make together, the diversity of our threads, to reach beyond ourselves and overcome the impossible. The true power of our game comes from unifying our individual backgrounds, connecting our unique stories, enabling us to be stronger, braver, greater. We can achieve so much more when we are all as one. What a season. The confetti is going to fall. Now she goes. And she's got it. Welcome to Adrian, Michigan. We're located in a proud college town. Adrian College is situated just 45 minutes from Ann Arbor, Detroit, and Toledo. We're very excited to show you just a little bit of what AC has to offer. This is the gateway to our campus. Welcome to the place that we believe will change the rest of your life. AC features one of the most well-rounded educational experiences in the country. We offer over 60 different academic majors and 10 academic institutes, as well as dozens of student organizations. Year after year, we've been ranked as one of the nation's best colleges, including being one of the most innovative institutions in the U.S. for our medical programs. Our campus is simply beautiful. Our student to faculty ratio is an incredible 13 to one. That means more attention for you and a much better overall learning environment. We know how to put together an education that is life changing. And these are just some of the highlights. From our communication arts program, to our many performing arts, to the home of business on campus, to our sciences and medical studies, we have the spaces where you can grow into the professional that you want to become. Our first year student experience is award winning. You'll make lifelong friends here, meet mentors, and maybe even meet that special someone. The Kane Student Center is open 24 hours a day, and there's a lot going on here. The Bulldog Beanery has all of your hot drinks. Pause and Go is our on-campus convenience store the bookstore is where you'll get all of your bulldog gear, and you can just hang out and study in the skyboxes. Not far away is the Shipman Library. The Shipman has quiet, relaxing spaces for you to study in. You can check out books from thousands of libraries around the country, and the Shipman is open 24 hours as well for your convenience. There are hundreds of learning opportunities on campus. In addition to the arts and beautiful facilities, Adrian College is known for its athletic programs. There is nothing like a Saturday game day here in Adrian. The Bulldog football team are 11-time MIAA champions. At Docking Stadium, fans watch soccer, lacrosse, football, and more. Just a few hundred yards away, Adrian College's basketball teams compete. In addition to basketball, fans can enjoy wrestling, acro and tumbling, and volleyball here. We also have a state-of-the-art weight room available to all of our students. When things heat up too much on campus, you can cool off with our ice sports. Our NCAA ice hockey teams are constantly battling in the national playoffs. 
Just a quick walk down the service drive, we feature one of the best baseball and softball programs in the nation at our level. Soon you'll be able to cross the street and watch men's and women's rugby take to the pitch as well. Our rowing, crew, and top-ranked bass fishing programs compete out of the Adrian College Boathouse, a gorgeous facility, just a 15-minute drive north on Devil's Lake. Our students know how to relax in their downtime. When they're not out and about, we have dozens of housing options on campus. With apartments right in the mix of things, you can pick what works best for you. We've also recently renovated a few of our housing options. Adrian College is a Methodist-affiliated institution that has been changing lives since 1859. The modern liberal arts education offered by our faculty is unrivaled. We can't wait to have you on campus and show you around. Visit adrian.edu to schedule a full campus visit today. We'll see you soon.
Welcome back inside the Arrington Ice Arena. 20 minutes gone and 40 still more to play. It's the quarterfinal round of the NCAA Division III playoffs. It's the St. Norbert Green Knights and your Adrian College Bulldogs. Hello, everyone. My name is Alex Herman, joined alongside by Tyler Ackerman. Happy to have you all right here on the Adrian College Sports Network. That was a fun first period. Game tied at one. We saw a goal early and then a goal a couple minutes later. What did you see after 20 minutes, Tyler? I mean, you want to talk about a fun atmosphere and just a fun game in general? That's what you got right here. Man, the crowd was into it. All the players are into it. This is what playoff hockey is about. As unpredictable as it gets. Can't ask for much more. We'll see what happens in the second period. We'll cut to ice level as players take to the ice. We'll look at some of the first period stats after 20 minutes. Shots 13 to eight in favor of the Bulldogs. The Green Knights winning the faceoff percentages 68 to 31. No power plays or penalties. Block shots four to three for the Green Knights. Puck is dropped. 20 minutes back on the score clock. And once again, we are underway from the AIA. Here's an early rush. Swede, and just about 12 seconds in, we were talking about no penalties. There's our first of the game. Yeah, so far it's been a pretty clean game. Nothing going on, and a quick rush by Swede. That line has been buzzing, like we've talked about many of times, and now the Bulldogs have an opportunity to go on the power play. They've been, they were 0 for 6 in the game in the Harris Cup Finals. I don't know what necessarily the call was, but the Bulldogs are going on the power play. Dayton Deeks to the box. I didn't see the signal. I thought either a slash or a hook, but nonetheless, Bulldogs to the power play. They set up shop in the offensive zone. Redding to Shields. Fires, tipped in front, saved by Garvey. And he holds on, good early chance. Bulldogs trying to find those sneaky redirections on the top of the blue paints. In the Harris Cup Finals, the Bulldogs seem to be just making one too many passes on the power play, not being able to get a lot of shots on net. I love what Shields did there. Just find a stick, have an opportunity to put the puck in the back of the net. As Coach Mike famously says, got to shoot the puck to find the back of the nets. And this is dumped all the way back down. Stewart will stop it with his stick. Shields will carry forward. Angled into the boards right there by Curtis Hammond. Now Jaden Shields off the netting, out of play. 128 left to go on the five on four. 19-15 left to go in the second period. And seeing that that puck just went out on its own, so unfortunately the draw comes outside for the Bulldogs. Take the face off in the neutral zone. It's one back. Tried to be cleared down by the Green Knights, but the Bulldogs take it away. Here's Heinz. A sidestep, curling back. Transitioning to forward, Heinz finds it down low for Summers. Summers to Redding, who was ahead of him on the half wall, deadlocked. Swade receiving pressure along the kick plate. We'll see who can force it free. It's kicked all the way back. Bulldogs will have to re-enter. Heinz lost it. It's turned over, dumped all the way down, playing the bounces. Stewart. Handles it behind his goalie cage. And now it's Shields. Shields to the left dot. Finds his way through. Now it's Connor May. Amsbaugh stops it. Had to get down to two knees. Shields to Amsbaugh. Back to Shields in the middle. They play catch. Heinz and Shields. What a save from Garvey. Got it with the glove. 19 seconds left in the five on four. We've finally, well, we finally seen some pressure by the Bulldogs. Norbert is really good on the, on the penalty kill, being able to match the men of Adrian and have those 50-50 opportunities to get the puck out of the net. Uh, a puck out of the zone, I mean. But 19 seconds left, as you said, and we have a draw on the right side. Got to collapse a little bit farther towards the front of the nets, if you're gonna find one here. This is Ryan Potosha to Riley Murphy. He gets it right back, shoots it, glove save from Garvey. Watched it all the way in. I like the positioning of Connor May, but was a little bit too off angle on the screen. 
allowed Garvey to see it into the glove. He's going to make that save just about every time. Yeah, May is a big guy too. Would love to have him take away the eyes of Garvey. And Murphy knows how to snipe the puck. So it would be good to take the eyes away and make sure that glove of Garvey is not able to quickly get the puck. As we have the official going to the scorer's box to tell the score box to give an extra second on the power play, but it's not going to matter. Julian Jacob gets it far deep. Penalty expires. We're back to even strength. John Calgin swipes it forward. Five on five as we continue at the 1736 spot in the second period. One to one quarterfinal NCAA game. Adrian College and St. Norbert. Jacob with a shot. Tipped in front. Glove down by Calgin. Softly plays it to the point. This slowly rolls on net. Sticked away by Garvey. Lifted all the way down. And it has the length for icing as we stop here. Take the draw back in the offensive zone. And while we have a second, take a quick moment to fill the viewers in and listeners. Some other scores in the quarterfinal matchups of the NCAA D3 tournament. Trinity leading Elmira 2-0 in the second period. Curry with a 2-0 lead over defending national championship Hobart. And Utica 1-0 as Kudo scores! Matt Kudo! A ripper from the point! Bulldogs on top, 2-1! It looked like Garvey got hit by his own guy in front of the net here as the puck, as Kudo walks the line. You see the defenseman pushing in the Adrian offensive player into Garvey. Garvey had no opportunity to make a play on the puck, but that's not Adrian's fault at all. When your defenseman pushes you into the opposing net, it's going to be a good goal every single day of the week. I don't know if there was contact in front or Garvey just caught an edge as he was moving side to side, but you saw him go down awkwardly as he was outstretching the glove to make the save. But Kudo, not one of the noted goal scorers for the Bulldogs, known really for his defensive depth on the blue line, wears an A on his sweater, but that's a big goal for the assistant captain in Matt Kudo. The junior defenseman from London, Ontario, Hey, no one asks how many, how the goals are scored. They just ask how many. They sure do. Matt Kudo striking when they need it. Two to one lead in favor of AC. Looking for a response to the Green Knights. This is Babiak. Lost it as he's hit hard into the boards. Takes a stumble. Slow back to his feet, but seems to be okay. Dumping in is Frazier. Babiak. Answers the bell. Kudo. He's hit hard. Down to the ice. Here goes Swede. Three on one to Babiak. Oh, and they misfired. Babiak had an open net. Amsball thought he was going to shoot. Didn't have his stick down. Amsball looking to fix the mistake. Fires and it's wide. Oh, what a golden opportunity that was for the Bulldogs to try and go up three to nothing, or three to one, I should say. I apologize. They can't convert. We talked about doing one too many passes. It's a prime example of that, Herms. Let's take the shot on that. He had a wide open net for a little bit. He do a little bit too much, and he take that great scoring chance, and it come up with nothing. We'll continue on at a one goal game. It's two to one, 15-30, right here on the Adrian College Sports Network, second period of play. Bulldogs turn up ice. Heinz needs to get to it quickly, unable to do so. Jumping out of the way was Heinz once again. Here's Summers, waits, moved towards the half wall by Michael Black. Bulldogs have enough time to make some changes, Shields to the left side blue line, Lovasek also on the wing. Summers, oh, with a crunching shoulder. That one's gonna sting a little bit. Got TJ Kofis right in the center of the chest, and you saw him wear it. 
but now will look to attack. This is Connor May, drops back for Shields. Now to Lovasek, here's another three on two. Lovasek fires, tipped into the netting. They can't get it again. And that was the shot that we needed before, just from in between the hash marks. But a good defensive poke check will put that out of play. St. norbert has got to watch. We got Adrian College forwards just flying the zone and they've not been able to pick up guys and we've had many opportunities now of I-Man Rushes going the other way for Adrian. Delay on the draw. It's tied up and one back. This is Mark Snar. Portillo. Couldn't handle it, but it'll touch it up a couple feet ahead of the blue. Gerstein finds it to Jacob. A slap shot is faked, ripped on, field golded way over the crossbar. Needed to keep that one just a little bit lower as a backhand from Shields is put up into the protective netting. 14-10 left to go in the second period. 2-1 to one the score right here from the Arrington Ice Arena. Alex Herman and Tyler Ackerman on the Adrian College Sports Network. We've seen all Adrian College so far in these first six minutes. I want to talk about a great start Norbert had in the first period. Adrian College has answered in the second period, and they have themselves a 2-1 lead. 20-8, the shots. We've seen a lot of opportunities here for the Bulldogs, not so many in the second period thus far for the Green Knights. We're looking to get back into this one. Good play from Calgen as he stepped up on by Strand. And this is going to be a penalty. Strand's going to get called. Let's see what the signal is. I'm not sure if I fully agree with that one. But it's interference. I really thought Calgen had the puck the whole time. And it kind of just dribbled off of his stick and Strand laid into him. But we'll catch it here on the replay. Here, let's take a better look at this. I, I would totally agree with you, Herms. I thought the puck was totally on his stick. I mean, oh, well, never mind. Uh, well, we're wrong. I, I thought it was a lot closer than it was, but the video does not lie. Bulldogs back to the power play. 0 for 2 in the game. Shields, Heinz, fires, played through the feet by Swade. Looking for the tip in front. Heinz, walking in his Redding. Can't fire. Redding gets it back. Shields controlling, signaling Redding. He'll step lower. Heinz is open. Here's the one-timer. They score! Zach Heinz, power play goal. It's three to one, dogs. We've seen this play so many times before. Deja vu as it might have been tipped in by Hotman, but a blast from the top of the circle from Heinz, finds the back of the net. You got it exactly right, Herms. That play has been done so many times by this power play unit. Unfortunately, Hotman just got that one right off the kneecap and nothing Garvey can do. 13-24 left to go in the second period. I mean, you want to talk about a momentum changer? Yeah, two quick goals in a matter of six minutes to start off a second period. Man. This is a relentless Adrian College Bulldog group who really through the course of the season has come together as a unit, hopefully, and found ways to fight adversity. Racing up is Frazier, spinning it towards the front. Oh, Stewart with the pad stop. Played it to the opposite side, but was in the right position at the last second. Here's a point drive that settles wide. Adinier trying to find Am's ball behind his backhand. Swade can't enter yet. Am's ball was still over in the O zone, so it's dumped in. Am's ball almost comes away with it. Babyak pressured right there from Dombrowski. Lifts in, and it's called down for icing. Adrian College can't change with 12.37 left to go in the second period. 
Yeah, Babyak was just a two or three feet before crossing the red line when he tossed that one back into St. Norbert's zone. A crucial little tiny mistake that you would love to not have as Adrian's not allowed to change and that line has been out there for a little bit, but they'll be perfectly fine as Krug loves to make sure all the boys are well conditioned. Official will separate Cam Babiak from Brock Baker. They get the drop of the puck and continue the game. Here's a slap shot blocked in front. That came off the stick of Lindstrom. Tried to hem a one-timer. As Karam's over for Strand. Shot blockered away by Stewart. Into the netting. More applause from the AIA faithful. 12.20 left to go in the second period. Score three to one. Adrian College leading the St. Norbert Green Knights. And when you think about looking back at the Harris Cup, the thing that mattered in that game was the power plays. St. Norbert was able to capitalize on both their power play goals and Adrian was not able to capitalize on anything and Adrian scores Here's on a, one of them. A threading pass from Michael Black as it evaded his grasp. He'll have to play it backwards. This is Lovasek, the Gerstein, he's open. Moving to the front was May, trying to tip it once more. Man, Bulldogs making life difficult for Hunter Garvey. No more straight shots, everything just seems to be bouncing around in front of them. Hey, he's either had to deal with tips or people in front of the net. And as a goaltender, Herms, I know you definitely do not like that when that happens. Absolutely, goalie's worst nightmare. Your hope is that you can see as many shots as cleanly as possible. And that has not been the case, especially here in the second period. This is fed to the point. And I believe the netting came off the mooring. And we're just going to take the face off in the neutral zone. I think the ref thought that Gerdstein was in the blue paint maybe. That might have been the call. Well, normally they, they wouldn't blow it down if he was just in there, but they saw something. I, they just signaled that the draw was going to be outside, so we'll take it a neutral ice regardless. Fighting his way for it is Liam Frazier. Gets it over for Adam Stacho. One of the biggest contributors on the offensive side of things for the Green Knights. Potosha, he's speeding forward, has Troon on the right wing. Couldn't get the right shot off. And Adinia driving the net front. Gave a little bit of a poke to Hunter Garvey who covered it up. And yeah, we haven't seen much of that Stacho frazier Dobrowski line do much today. Mostly in Pat because they've been matched along with Ernsborough, Swade, and Murphy as Adrian College is the home team so they get their last change so they can have their matchups that they please. 11.07 in the second period. This defensive zone draw, one back by the Green Knights, but the Bulldogs will transition to offense. Point shot from Shields, deflected off a knee pad. Now it's Brock Baker. A dump in, came off the stick of Braden Lindstrom. Now it's down low, oh, awkward play there. Stewart recovering to his crease. Came out to play it, was a little bit out of position. It looked like he caught an edge behind the net. But he's still acrobatically able to keep the puck out of the net. And the faceoff will come on the right of Stewart. Another thing to touch on, Herms, is the two goals that we've had on this period have come from outside the dot area. We talked about traffic in front of the net. Uh, Garvey has seen a reflection in front of the net. And also that just weird, like maybe he fell or he had someone bump into him for that second goal. There's a shot off the draw. Babyak soaks it. Oh, man, that one's going to hurt. Caught the dead area on the back of the shin pad, so he'll skate it off. But he's a tough hockey player. We'll see if he gets off the ice to get a replacement, and he does. Matt Kudo to change. Yeah, it looked like it went right off his Achilles heel or the Achilles tendon, and those are just tough to breathe, man. Those ones suck. Sure does, but luckily... A lot of the protective padding, a lot better than it used to be and continues to improve as the years go by. You can't even imagine what that must have felt like 
30, 40 years ago. <laughs> Redding trying to get out of his defensive end, can do so. It's hemmed back in. Kudo right back after it. Along the wall, pushed forward. Summers trying to win the race with Strand. Oh, hard hit from Strand. Redding dangles. Oh, nice move. Couldn't get in position for the shot. Skating is Hansen. Down on one knee was Klein. Stopped the feed going through the slot. This has put off the netting. Will stop play underneath the 10 minute mark in the second period. 9.53 left. 3 to 1 the score for those of you just tuning in, watching, or listening right here on the Adrian College Sports Network. Alex Herman and Tyler Ackerman, so happy to have you all join us here this evening for some great NCAA playoff hockey. The last game this season that will be played from the Arrington Ice Arena, all seven hockey teams having no more games from their home barn after today. Everybody in full playoff mode. Lots to look forward to. Klein takes a swipe at it. This puck is played up for Hillman who fires. It's blocked. Excuse me, that was Will Stromp with the attempt. Klein is after it. Now to the left point. It's kept in deep. Klein again will have to go chase back after it. You've seen these Bulldogs block a ton of shots recently in these last five minutes. Want to win a national championship? That's what you've got to do. Got to do the things that sometimes cause you a little bit of pain. But well, that's part of the game. Bulldog's not afraid. Here's a wraparound attempt. Shields. Not enough muscle to get the shot off. Stacho lifts out. And will stop play. Yeah, Stacho was able to get that shot block on Shields. Trying to chip it to get out of the zone, but they're going to have the draw come back inside as he was not able to cross the blue line before chipping it into the Adrian College bench. A little bit of a huddle from the Green Knights. Trying to figure out their strategy for the next play. Rotated back. Now up the wall. Skating with speed is Stacho. Dangerous winger for the Green Knights. Need to keep tabs on him all game long. Here's a juicy chance in front. Dombrowski couldn't get a handle. A shot there. Caromed off the outside of the net. Now towards the middle again. Bulldogs need to watch out. Spinning a shot. That was Dombrowski. Don't know if Stewart got a piece of it with the glove or not, but it looked like it redirected towards the corner. John Calgin to Theo Troon. They'll move forward. Here's Troon waiting. Fires. Glove save from Garvey. Popped out of the webbing for a moment, but he gets the goalie paw down on it. It'll freeze at 8.09. We finally saw that first line, the powerhouse line for the Green Knights, able to have some sustainable offensive zone pressure. I mean, Frazier had a high chance opportunity in front of the net, found that soft area that we've been talked about in the first period that St. Norman needs to find, but not able to find the back of the net. May with a good effort on the draw against Lindstrom, but he can't win it. Strand, a pass. A Dinier with good pressure along the wall. Hit up Baker. Gerstein gets this off, trying to poke for it was Loretto. A Dinier pressured behind him by Portillo. And <laughs> amazing to see a Dinier and Portillo. Here's a dead angle shot. Skims around, somehow stays out. In transition, this is Gerstein. Gerstein over the blue, lost the handle. Connor May to Lovasek in front. Bottom circle. Lovasek gets it back on the backhand. Shutting the door is Garvey, and he'll hold on to it. But yeah. to finish my thought, kind of crazy to see the two big men on the ice, Io Adinier and Gustav Portillo, Adinier listed at six foot five, one ninety-five, and Portillo 
we talked about earlier, also six foot five, except he's 230. <laughs> Those are two big guys, Tyler. Yeah, you got like two giraffes going at each <laughs> other, really. And the size advantage is still, you got some big guys on both sides, man. You got old gentlemen in college, man, and that's just how you win championships. Iowa Dinier with one of the, he's one of the players, I should say, with former NCAA Division I experience. Played a couple of seasons at Alabama Huntsville before making his way out to beautiful Adrian, Michigan. And Portillo, as we talked about earlier, older brother Eric Portillo playing at the University of Michigan. Now in the American Hockey League for the Ontario Reign under the Los Angeles Kings organization. Yeah, multiple Adrian and college players on this team. It was a part of that 2021 or 2022 run that they had for the national championship. So they have the experience. They know what it takes to get there. And the score shows it so far as it is 3-1. to 6.51 left to go in the late stages of the second period. Quarterfinal NCAA hockey right here on the Adrian College Sports Network. This puck is relocated to the right corner. Ams ball goes off the wall to Swade, who will dump it down. This likely will be icing as getting to it first is the Green Knights, Cooper Morris. And will force the draw back to where we took it just a few short seconds ago. We haven't seen much of the energy that we had in the first 10 minutes in this past four. It's kind of been settled down a little bit more, but Adrian still holds on to that 3-1 lead. Swade directing traffic, moving everybody into position. Looks like he's going against Frazier again. We've seen this matchup quite a few times. It's one back, but stolen. Up top, it's Dombrowski. A soccer kick from Morris. This gets out and plays for Mark Snarr. Off the boards, all the way down, no icing. We continue. This is Kudo. The last goal scorer, or the second goal scorer for the Bulldogs. Mixing up the order there. Heinz with the last one to make things three to one on the power play. Jake Swade enters. Nice pass, moving over, trying to find Murphy. He was right there, but stick checked off of it by Frazier. Green Knights moving up, dropped back for Stacho. Circles the top, threads it down low. Dombrowski with a toe drag, Kudo with a jackknife off his stick. Kudo again will block this pass. Hartman plays to the middle. Strand picks up, Mohawk formation. Now towards the middle. Tipped in front. Squeaks down low. Both sides trying to play a bouncing hot puck as Babiak makes a nice hit. Heinz, he's got some room. Can't fully control it. Using the edge work. Moves it down low for Summers. Summers and Redding right there. Will Stromp, moved back. Now to the middle, blocked by Shields. The huge block because Stewart played that puck like it was going over, so that puck got through, half the net was wide open. Sure was, and that's sometimes the way that the puck surprises netminders. Can't always read where it's going to go. They say hockey is a game of broken plays, and that being a perfect example right there. Austin Klein with the send-in. Garvey will play it on the backboard. Deeks. Nothing going on this play as it finds its way to Black. Calgin fights for it. Stripped by Portillo. Oh, a giveaway. Troon to the front. Oh, what a save from Garvey. Down and out, but he got it with the pad. How about that stop on Summers? That was huge, keeping this game manageable for St. Norbert. Troon moving forward, another save from Garvey. Apologies to interrupt you there, Tyler. 
This has played into the netting. We'll get a whistle. 3.42 left to go in the second period. I mean, we didn't have much action <laughs> the last five minutes, and then two great scoring opportunities in a matter of 20 seconds for the Bulldogs as we get a replay coming in. Looks to be just a broken play, as you've been mentioning, or just a turnover. And the fake slap shot for a pass, and Garvey just keeps it out of his net. A play of being so athletic to be able to slide over, make sure that the puck does not find the back of the net. Top of the circle, Kaljin rips one. Don't know who blocked it, but it stopped before reaching the net. A pickup here from Hammond, Green Knights offsides. They shoot it. And a little bit of some words being exchanged. Ben Loretto getting tangled up and familiar with Curtis Hammond. I mean, that was accidental. Shot came maybe a millisecond after the whistle was blown. It's an offsides play that shouldn't happen if you're Norbert as we get a neutral zone draw. 3.33 left to go in the second period. 3-1 to the score in favor of the Adrian College Bulldogs. They square away with the St. Norbert Green Knights. Fourth time in just about a month. These two teams come together. Three of those four times right here from the Arrington Ice Arena. Or I should say two of those times. The last time being the Harris Cup Finals just two weeks ago. Green Knights took that game by a score of three to one. Here's Ryan Potosha. Potosha moving in. Gerstein fires and a great save from Garvey. Got it with the pad. Needed a little bit more elevation to get it to go. Hansen, here's a shot. Oh, what a save! Dershon Stewart! Ready as always, and he keeps a great A opportunity out. What a stop from the Bulldog goaltender. Here's another chance. That one whistles wide. 2.30 left to go in the second period. Gerstein to Lovasek. The last game, as we're still talking about it, it was a goaltending clinic on both sides. Stewart did his best efforts to keep the Bulldogs in it, and so did Garvey, who played stellar. Both of them with repeat efforts here today. Move to the left wing. Here's a chance. Nice back check from Loretto. Got right behind Stacho as he was going to release the shot. Poked it clean off of his blade. There's a whistle here. Three Knights were changing. Is it too many men or did it hit off of somebody on the bench? I think the linesman thought that it went off the bench, but I'm pretty sure that went off of a player that was coming off the ice. So I think Norbert just got away with the too many men penalty. I'm not certain, but the draw will stay in the neutral zone. As Shields was talking to the referee, trying to get an explanation of what went down right there. Swade and Hammond, new pairing for Jake Swade. We'll see how Hammond can do against him. He's usually paired up with his other number, 12 counterpart. Uh, Norbert as the draw changes to the other side of the neutral zone. Not sure if this will change much as far as how the play will develop, but officials with a decision that moves to the other faceoff dot. And Swade will win it. Jacob fighting off a man in Stromp. Jacob with a shot into the chest of Garvey. Now the faceoff will stay on the far side, but now in the offensive zone of the home team. Man, Garvey and Stewart has kept both teams in it. We had offensive power in the first five minutes of the second period, and it seemed to be all goaltending in the last five so far. 148 remaining in the second period. Taking this off the draw is number six. Cooper Morris gets it to Snar, dancing around as Stromp, gets it down low, to the front, they score! Carter Hotman, it's his second of the night. It's three to two. Green Knights are back in it at the 132 mark. That seemed just to be a normal play 
Uh, just Jacob got caught and found the sweet spot. Hotman did again. And it's the second of the night. And this game is now three to two. There's a penalty being called against the Bulldogs. I think there might have been a delayed penalty on that goal. I never saw an arm up personally. We'd have to go back and rewatch it, but the signal was for a slash. And Jaden Shields is going to talk to the linesman, and rightfully so. I never saw anything. And head officials will come together and talk about this for a moment. Nothing will change. And the Green Knights get a goal back, and now they're going on the man advantage. Story continues here at the AIA. 1.30 left to go in the second period. 90 seconds. Two minutes on the five on four for the Green Knights. They move to offense, and they score! Back-to-back -back shots, a power play goal, and we're evened up at three. I mean, you talk about your zone entries on the power play, this was to perfection by St. Norbert. That's the guy you gotta watch out for in Stacho. Goes upstairs over the blocker of Stewart, and that's just a Really unfortunate break for Adrian College. 117 remaining in the second period. It's now tied three to three. Two goals on two shots. And this game just can change in a matter of seconds, Herms. Oh my goodness. Playing an awkward bounce as Stewart will get the glove on top of it. I mean, one play where apparently there was a delayed penalty and a goal scored, and they get on the power play, St. Norbert, and find a way to tie this game up. Wow. I'm speechless as many are here in the air in tonight's arena. You look around and scan the faces. Nobody can believe what they're seeing. Here's another chance in front. Save from Stewart, got it with the pad. 60 seconds left to go in the second. Three to three tie game on the past two shots. Redding tries to find Heinz. A backhand will deflect off the center ice scoreboard with 46.9 left to go. I think the faceoff is going to be in the offensive end for Adrian College. Herms, you talk about playoffs being so unpredictable. And the Bulldogs were sitting nicely, had a 3 1 lead for themselves. And all of a sudden, in a matter of no time, the game is tied. And Adrian's got to be able to find their feet again and get back to the hockey that they're used to playing. Jacob to Amsball. Swade trying to get a handle on it. He can't. Shields to Amsball. Bulldogs trying to get back on top. It's dumped in. Shields will chase after it. Lindstrom trailing him. Here's a shot. That one high and wide, had some heat on it. Doesn't go. Jake Swade walking in, drops for Murphy. Now to the backhand, looking towards the front. There was space. Here's another chance, caromed off a body. Murphy spins it on that, playing the redirect was Garvey. And Swade with an aggressive hit on the top of the crease. Murphy fires, he scores! Oh. Riley Murphy with 2.3 seconds left to go in the second period. Bulldogs are back on top. It's four to three. Ryan Murphy not able to play the first half because of a neck injury. Spins around with two seconds left and takes a picking of a top corner. And all of a sudden this game is now 4-3 and the crowd is back into it. This is one of the craziest second periods I think I have ever seen. And it all starts in the first frame. There's 2.3 seconds left to go in the period, so we'll take the draw and then get back to the recap. But this is absolutely insane. The draw is taken at center. The horn will sound. The game was tied on two shots with under two minutes to play in the second, 
And now the Bulldogs lead it again by a goal. Both teams back to their locker rooms to draw up strategy for the final regulation period. Bulldogs on top after 40, four to three. My goodness. I mean, the AIA had no life at all oh my after gosh. those two goals. <laughs> this place was completely dead. And Ryan Murphy, a junior, not able to play the first half of the season because of a neck injury, comes in and shows why he is a top Bulldog for this squad. All and right. Two seconds left <laughs> and a turnaround shot. Wow. Just picks a top corner. My goodness, Herms. All right. Well, to piggyback off the beginning of my thoughts to close out the period, this wild frame, you know, really started all in the first period. We'll talk about it again. The scoring was opened up at the 14 second mark by Carter Hotman. Then it was followed up by Ian Amsbaugh at 8.18, one to one. You end the first period at a tie hockey game. Early on it was Matt Kudo, an even strength goal. Makes it two to one. Then on the power play, Zach Heinz rips one from the top of the circle, three to one dogs. Late in the second period, Carter Hotman gets his second goal at 828, excuse me, at 1828. And then just 20 seconds later, 1842, Adam Stacho ties it up, makes it three to three. Game in question at that point, you have no idea what's gonna happen. And you can't write this if you tried. 1958 left to go. Riley Murphy, shorthanded, gets the goal. Man, oh man, that's just absolutely incredible. We finish out 40 minutes of play, Bulldogs up four to three. I don't even know what there is to break down. This game, just absolutely incredible from the AIA. If you're Adrian, I think the message is you just gotta lock it down in the defensive end, keep shooting the puck and make life difficult for Garvey. It's the same thing really for the Green Knights. It looked like they were out of it, but they battled back. They stayed in this one. It was tied in a jiffy. Bulldogs go back on top by a spinning shot from Murphy. If you're the coaching staff on each side, Tyler, what are you telling your teams? Well, for the Bulldogs, it would be you got to bear down in the zone. You can't have one play turn into two goals for the opposition. So you got to make sure you're blocking the shots. Make sure you're not taking any dumb penalties. And if you're saying Norbert, I mean, two goals in a matter of 30 seconds, it can be done. You're not out of this game. You're only down by a goal. And we've seen the transition of just the momentum being able to flip on both sides of play. This game is still anybody's, Herms. And I, I don't even know what to say after that. <laughs> I'm speechless, but what a classic NCAA playoff showdown that we have here right from the Arrington Ice Arena. Before we cut to break, we'll take a look at some of the scores around the NCAA on this side of the bracket, it's Trinity College and Elmira. Trinity leading their quarterfinal matchup two to nothing. Time winding down in the third regulation period. On the other side, end of the second, Curry is up two to one over defending national champs Hobart. And right below them, it's Utica and Plymouth State. As their third period starts, Utica winning that contest by a score of three to one. Lots to look forward to in this third period. Who's going to come out on top, weather the storm, and move on to the Frozen Four? We'll find out after the break. Alex Herman and Tyler Ackerman don't go anywhere. You're listening to and watching the NCAA playoffs right here on the Adrian College Sports Network. A single thread is unique. Like each of us, full of purpose and potential. A strand designed to connect, strengthen, and unite. But we face different challenges and have different opportunities. By acknowledging that others may struggle in ways we do not, we can celebrate our differences, embrace each other, and fortify the ties among us. A single thread can fray, yet when it's woven with another, a bond forms. 
a new strength created by the fabric of the whole. Let's embrace the fabric we make together, the diversity of our thread, to reach beyond ourselves and overcome the impossible. The true power of our game comes from unifying our individual backgrounds, connecting our unique stories, enabling us to be stronger, braver, greater. We can achieve so much more when we are all as one. What a season. The confetti is going to fall. There she goes, and she's got it. Welcome to Adrian, Michigan. We're located in a proud college town. Adrian College is situated just 45 minutes from Ann Arbor, Detroit, and Toledo. We're very excited to show you just a little bit of what AC has to offer. This is the gateway to our campus. Welcome to the place that we believe will change the rest of your life. AC features one of the most well-rounded educational experiences in the country. We offer over 60 different academic majors and 10 academic institutes, as well as dozens of student organizations. Year after year, we've been ranked as one of the nation's best colleges, including being one of the most innovative institutions in the U.S. for our medical programs. Our campus is simply beautiful. Our student to faculty ratio is an incredible 13 to 1. That means more attention for you and a much better overall learning environment. We know how to put together an education that is life changing. And these are just some of the highlights. From our communication arts program, to our many performing arts, to the home of business on campus, to our sciences and medical studies, we have the spaces where you can grow into the professional that you want to become. Our first year student experience is award winning. You'll make lifelong friends here, meet mentors, and maybe even meet that special someone. The Kane Student Center is open 24 hours a day, and there's a lot going on here. The Bulldog Beanery has all of your hot drinks. Pause and Go is our on-campus convenience store, the bookstore is where you'll get all of your Bulldog gear, and you can just hang out and study in the skyboxes. Not far away is the Shipman Library. The Shipman has quiet, relaxing spaces for you to study in. You can check out books from thousands of libraries around the country, and the Shipman is open 24 hours as well for your convenience. There are hundreds of learning opportunities on campus. In addition to the arts and beautiful facilities, Adrian College is known for its athletic programs. There is nothing like a Saturday game day here in Adrian. The Bulldog football team are 11-time MIAA champions. At Docking Stadium, fans watch soccer, lacrosse, football, and more. Just a few hundred yards away, Adrian College's basketball teams compete. In addition to basketball, fans can enjoy wrestling, acro and tumbling, and volleyball here. We also have a state-of-the-art weight room available to all of our students. When things heat up too much on campus, you can cool off with our ice sports. Our NCAA ice hockey teams are constantly battling in the national playoffs. 
Just a quick walk down the service drive, we feature one of the best baseball and softball programs in the nation at our level. Soon you'll be able to cross the street and watch men's and women's rugby take to the pitch as well. Our rowing, crew, and top-ranked bass fishing programs compete out of the Adrian College Boathouse, a gorgeous facility, just a 15-minute drive north on Devil's Lake. Our students know how to relax in their downtime. When they're not out and about, we have dozens of housing options on campus. With apartments right in the mix of things, you can pick what works best for you. We've also recently renovated a few of our housing options. Adrian College is a Methodist affiliated institution that has been changing lives since 1859. The modern liberal arts education offered by our faculty is unrivaled. We can't wait to have you on campus and show you around. Visit adrian.edu to schedule a full campus visit today. We'll see you soon. Welcome back inside the Arrington Ice Arena. Tensions flaring high, emotion clearly evident in this game. It's the St. Norbert Green Knights and the Adrian College Bulldogs in the quarterfinals of the NCAA Division III playoffs. Hello everyone, my name is Alex Herman, joined alongside by Tyler Ackerman. 
What a wild ride this one is. Be sure to buckle up, put on your seatbelts, because this game is getting absolutely crazy here from the AIA. I can't even still believe what we saw transpire after 40 minutes. We started off at a tie hockey game, went to 2-1, then to 3-1. 3-2, and the next shot, 3-3. Two seconds left, 4-3. You can't write this stuff if you tried, but man, this has been a fun one so far. 40 minutes gone, 20 minutes still to go in the third period. What did you see from these both sides? I mean, you want to talk about playing with heart? That's exactly what it is. You have a 1-1 hockey game. Adrian finds a way to score two more and to make it 3-1. You would think Norbert needs something, and they are able to find a goal, get on the power play, and score in a matter of no time. And then once but everyone, everyone was silent, and Murphy was able to find the back of the net with two seconds left, get this place bumping again, and I can't wait for this third period. If it's anything like the second, we are in for another treat. All right, this is going to be a fun one. We'll take two. Center ice as we're ready to get things going here in this one. 20 minutes back on the score clock. Center ice, face off, puck is dropped, and once again, we are underway from the AIA. You're listening to and watching the NCAA Division III quarterfinal right here on the Adrian College Sports Network. 15 seconds in, a hit in the right corner. That's Austin Klein. Riley Murphy, the last goal scorer to get things at four to three. Shots 29 to 21 in favor of the AC Bulldogs. This plays back for Denier. His front pass took a carom off of his stick. Controlling is Mark Snarr. A takeaway, here's Amsball. In, pad save from Garvey. Watched it in, didn't make it clean, but man, he didn't move on that one. That one hit him straight in the pillows. It's a lot of trust in those pillows. Garvey plays it behind his cage as it's distributed off the boards. Now to the stick of Dombrowski. Adenier steps up with a drive. Played off the stick. Now back down low. This is Frazier to the middle. Bulldogs need to hurry. Matt Redding, Heinz, and Summers. Heinz gets it to Summers. Summers with a shot on the left side. Goes high. Shields with a high riser of his own. Blockered away, might have been tipped in front. Looked like Garvey saw it. Julian Jacob. This is Shields on his own blue to Summers. Heinz getting a little bit too excited. They're off sides. 18 17 left to go in the third period. Again, we saw an I'm in rush for Adrian. They had a couple of those in the second period that led to some goals. Norbert's got to make sure that they're not letting those forwards fly. Neutral draw. Kicked back. Played up by the Green Knights. May trying to steal it. Klein with a small pass to May. Lovasek bumping into him along the wall. Klein. Sends it in down low, top of the circle in his own end. Was Strand. Stewart swipes it on the backhand to his blocker side corner. Puck is checked up. Sent to the top of the blue. Kept in by the effort from Subert, but Lovasek helps it out. Here's May with Gerstein. Got taken down to one knee from a hit from Hammond. Quick pass from Snarr, gets all the way down. Shields able to win the race. It's icing with 17-21 remaining in the third. Hammond, great back check there to stop that two-on-one opportunity to make this game a two-goal lead for the Bulldogs as we get an offensive zone draw. Here's Calgin at the top of the circle. Cycled down low from Shields played off the backboards and we talked a little bit about it at the start or the end of the last break. The out of town scores, everything remaining the same for right now except one change on the other side of the bracket. Hobart and Curry, Curry was up two to nothing and Hobart has found a way 
to answer back. They're now on top three to two with 9.57 remaining in the third period. What a game that would be. And a massive defeat for Curry. We're looking to upset the defending national champions. Play resumes on this ice surface. Patosha on the left hash. Calgin spinning. Troon to Calgin, releases and fans on it. This plays to the outside. Now through the middle, a kick in. Stays in between the blue from Patosha. Now it's Morris. A sand wedge gets that in underneath the red. Bulldogs will clear out. That comes off the stick of Ben Loretto. And as he got it out, he'll have to try and do it again. This is Frazier who pressures him. Pass off for Amsbaugh. Amsbaugh with the first goal for the Bulldogs in the first period. Got things tied at one after that goal 15 seconds in from Hotman. Behind it is Dombrowski. Ducking out of the way was Stacho. Tried not to catch it off of the brain bucket. And it's Garvey who goes to one hand to play it behind the crease. Hard hit there on the boards. Murphy's going to get called here. Called for a charging what it looks like. Ooh. The crowd does not like it. We'll see if we can take another look at it here. I don't know if we caught the replay or not, but we do indeed have it. Let's check it out. There was pressure down low. It cycled back. And angling him to the boards was Murphy. That call, I think, really goes 50-50, but the officials with eyes on it right in front. I feel like the defenseman on Norbert turned his back into that one. Hard to tell. Officials making the last decision. This is cleared out, deflected off a body, and the center ice faceoff will be taken as it hit off the overhanging scoreboard. And you can hear the disdain from the AIA faithful as the Murphy penalty being announced over the PA system. Eight seconds gone in the five on four penalty for the Green Knights. 15.39 left to go in the third period. Bulldogs on top, four to three, right here on the Adrian College Sports Network. Alex Herman and Tyler Ackerman, happy to have you all tune in for a good evening of playoff hockey. Calgin swipes it back, trying to help his team tick off some time on the clock. Making their approach are the Green Knights. This is Snar, who gets a pass to Stromp. A nice dangle, moves his way closer, will circle back to the top of the blue. Looking for a shot, finally finds it. Kick saved by Stewart. Back to the top, oh and it's just high. Two good shots from the Green Knights. Looking to find one. Outside, here's a kick save from Stewart. Fought it off from the stick of Lindstrom. Calgin pressures, back for Snar, releases. Blocked in front, Kudo trying to slap it out, and it rolls over the blue. Bulldogs can make changes. Two big saves from Stewart to keep the Bulldogs ahead by one. Snar at center to a speeding Frazier. Hugs the boards, pressured by Redding. A Dinier in the mix, plays out for Redding. Tying it up on the boards, gets it off for Loretto. He clears down, but it doesn't get out. May turns and we'll send it to the other end. Good effort there from the Bulldogs in the D zone. This is the captain in Hopman, a steal. Clear down Garvey with the song play, doesn't see Swade. Down low, shorthanded, will wrap around the cage. Decides to send it all the way back for Loretto. Loretto has a denier as he shovels it over to him. Seven seconds left to go. Man, that was a quick five on four. Not a lot of whistles. And you hear the applause from the crowd. They've killed it off. Bulldogs back to even strength. will skate five on five. 13.43 left to go in the third period. Dogs up by one. It's four to three. Down low, it's Hammond. Up the wall for Murphy. Tries to chip out. Can't do so. Murphy. With the extra effort, tangled on the boards. 
Julian Jacob fighting for it. It's lost. Here's a nice move in front. Save from Stewart. He kept it out. Oh, on top of the crease were the Green Knights. Here's another point drive. It is blocked. Ian Amsbaugh was looking for the stretch as this is threaded over horizontally. Another chance. Redirected in front. Cleared off the boards. No icing. A tired line for Adrian College. Gets a change. Tipped into the zone. Babiak right after it. Let's go Bulldogs from the Arrington Ice Arena. Here's Summers, poked off of his stick by Michael Black. Babiak once more has his pass tipped into the netting. We'll take a pause. 12.39 left to go in the third period. St. Norbert didn't really get much on that power play, but it was after the power play where they finally had some sustained pressure in the zone. And Stewart... Big time saves from him as something's going on. Yeah, I think Stewart is asking why maybe the faceoff is not going to be on the outside. I think he thought that it was deflected by a green knight. Gerstein and Portillo come together. Man, their sight lines right eye to eye. We talked about the matchup between Portillo and Adinia. Gerstein also in the mix there. Another big player for Adrian College. Stands at six foot three, but I don't know. He kind of looks taller than six foot three because the top of the head's pretty close together. I mean, both for those young gentlemen, they're not used to looking eye to eye when they're talking to someone. They're used to looking down, so it's a little bit of a difference there. D zone draw for the Bulldogs. It's swiped off the draw. Schubert plays it, put up into the netting once more. I think Lovisek got a tip on that. The Bulldogs talking and just being able to just to block shots and able to get sticks on pucks, keeping this game one score lead for them. And we talked about it a little bit, uh, just bearing down in the D zone. That's what Adrian's doing so far. Lindstrom and Patosha. Patosha gets the W on the dot. Here's a dump in from Schubert. Stewart couldn't get a handle on it as it's flipped out over the blue. Patosha trying to take a step for it. An extended twig from Caldron tried to break up the play. Caldron moved towards the glass in front of the scoring table. This is lifted all the way down. And it is icing. What I love about Adrian defense is that they give these forwards for Norbert, there's no time and space at all. When they get the puck from their defenseman in the neutral zone, they have someone on them constantly. And sometimes it can bite them in the butt. We saw it in the first 15 seconds. And it was swayed that uh, someone stepped and that turned their two-on-one and it got scored on. But they've been really able just to take the time and space away from St. Norbert. All right, 12.04 in the third. Waiting for the drop, Swade on the backhand. Shield steps in, fires into the glove, it's played out. Juicy rebound, Amsball right there, trying to fire it on the second attempt, can't get it done. Skating it up is Portillo. Oh, and a big hit from Shields on Portillo, the hip check. How about that? Murphy shakes his way around. Swade racing back after it. Oh, and he's blown up underneath the red. Two big hits in the past 15 seconds. One aside. I don't think Swade was expecting a big backside right to his chest as he lost his footing. He'll play it down low for Murphy. Just barely gets off of his blade. Now up the wing for Frazier to the backhand. A nice move from Dombrowski. Amsball right back behind him to stop him from shooting. Summers. For Murphy, off the wall and out. Linesman touched it with his stick. This will be offsides, but you heard the disdain from the AIA faithful trying to tell the linesman to get out of the way. I don't know how much that will help. They don't, they don't like the refs <laughs> after that Murphy penalty. They've, every single time the ref has gotten in the way since that, it's been an uproar from the fans here at the AIA. A big crowd here. 
at this game. And it's funny, too, because that wasn't even the official that made a call. That was a linesman who got in the way with the skate. It was the head official with the orange band who made the call earlier. Uh, the fans don't care. Carries over. A ref is still a ref to most people. But nonetheless, this is in the slot. Here's a chance. Stewart shuts the five hole. Adinier trying to drive up himself. Dumps it in. Will pause on the blue line. Not a noted forward, but will stay back on top of his point. Skating is Kofis. This is off for Adinier, lifted off the glass and down. Oh, the Green Knights had too many men on the ice, but no call. They were amidst a change. Hard to ignore that one. There's another reason for the fans to not be liking these refs right now. We'll keep the opinions neutral on the officiating. They've been calling a great game so far. Yeah, Every indeed. Everything's been clean up to this point. Shields gets a hit in the corner. We've passed 10 minutes in, a, in the third period. Four to three, Adrian leads it. A spinning hit from Redding. Here's a shot. Skitters wide. Babiak chips it up into the air. Can't be played down. Redding intercepts. Forces it back for Shields. Up ice for Heinz. Babiak swaps with Kudo. Hartley dumps it in and gets it off for a pit stop. Shields to Redding, who couldn't caress it. Now going backwards to head forwards with Strand. Turned over. That's Kudo with some good pressure. Man, Kudo's had a great game here. Playing really defensively sound and has a goal in this contest. Here's some speed. It's Potosha. Threads it for Calgin. A couple of stick handles. Now towards the backhand. Had some space. Klein can't control it. Adenier plays it in between his legs. Troon spinning around, evading a hit. Now it's the big man in Portillo. Has to fight off some attackers. Cycled down low, Austin Klein waiting. A blind backhand. A Denier has to get it out of harm's way. Stewart didn't know where it was. Calgin with Potosha on the right. Calgin will dump in. Now decides to skate off. It's Murphy who swaps with him. Now it's the other number 11. That's Dombrowski. Getting it to the top of the key in Schubert. A one-time blast. Man, that had some force on it. That was Adam Stacho. We saw him with a hefty shot in the second period. That's another great example of how he's been able to lead his team with some points this season. Murphy gets it in. A let's go Bulldogs from the fans at the Arrington Ice Arena. Energy pulsating through the building. Shields fires and into the glove of Garvey, who will watch it all the way down. Will take the whistle with 17.30 left to go in the third period. NCAA quarterfinal matchup between St. Norbert and Adrian College right here on the Adrian College Sports Network. I just like looking at throughout this game so far the matchups that Krug has laid out. And it seems that be that the Sway line is always facing against the Fraser line, a 12 and 12 battle. And mostly it's going well for the Bulldogs. Heading up with it is Kofis trying to play it in traffic. It's bouncing around. It stayed out. Stewart in the butterfly position. Don't believe he made contact with it. But it was cleared on top of the net front. Here's Kofis again. Sends one on, sticked away by Stewart. Top of the point, great block. Here's Gerstein with some space. And he fans on the shot. It was Snar who was behind him. Mike got a piece of it. Good effort on both sides, offensive and defensive. Gerstein loves that right wing. Scored a goal last week against Stevens Point from that same side. Kofis with a feed to Hammond. It gets in and rims around. 6.33 left to go in the third period.
Down low is Adinie. This is played off the apron. A little bit quieter here in the AIA. Everybody on the edge of their seats, waiting to find out what's going to happen next. Loretto in the back end to Adinie. Good pass, gets to the stick of Redding. Now to Heinz, and they're offsides. That was the right call. The linesman had that perfectly played there. He had a great sight. Summers, unfortunately, lifted his back leg a millisecond before the puck entered into the zone. The fans don't like it, but the referee, the linesman, was indeed correct on that offsides call. Some unofficial finals from the other quarterfinal games. It looks like Trinity has bested Elmira College and will host the Frozen Four out in Hartford, Connecticut. That was a two to nothing score and officially Utica advances after they beat Plymouth State four to one. They'll also be in the Frozen Four. They await the winner of Hobart and Curry. Hobart was up three to two the last time we checked. Curry has tied it. Time is not updated yet, but it reads as 52 seconds left to go in the third period. That one at three to three. Winner of this game will face off against Trinity College out in Hartford, Connecticut. Long drive out east for both of these two teams, even farther for St. Norbert. Off the draw, it's kept in. Here's a shot, tracking it into the glove is Stewart. They'll hold on, 5.47 remaining in the third. You're the Bulldogs. The main thing to do is just stay defensively sound. You do not want to give up any grade-A opportunities for St. Norbert because they've been able to capitalize on them today. And you're just looking for maybe an insurance goal, but defense first. All right. We continue as Adinier will possess it. Can't flip it out, but now it does. Murphy off the boards to Amsball. A stick lift. Gets it off. The blade of Am's ball from Dombrowski. Tipped out of midair after it is Statue. But Denier angled into the boards. Dombrowski right there fighting for it. Comes away with it. Sending it to the top. Here's a feed over for Schubert. Back for Strand. Releases. Stick save from Stewart. Moved it towards the corner. And a penalty. Interference will be called against Io Adinier as he goes to the box. I was more focused on the puck that was cycled to the front. Not sure what it was. I think it was. It looked like it was, the signal was interference, but I never saw anything. 5.06 left to go in the third period. Two minute power play now for the Green Knights. Looking to get back in this one. Scores four to three. Five minutes to play. Here's a shot from the point. It gets through, and Stewart gets on top of it. A deflection in front of the net. It was under Stewart, but luckily he still had control of the puck, and we'll have another offensive zone draw for the Green Knights. Bulldogs make changes. It looks like it's the same power play unit out for St. Norbert. They've got Strand and Stacho at the point. Centering Hotman Frazier as well as Dombrowski. Loretto trying to fight for it. Calgin trailing behind. Played to the top in Deeks. Here's a quick shot. That one wide. A good one from Dayton Deeks. Sneaky release. Good move from Dombrowski. Back to Deeks. Now is Stacho. He fires. A nice save from Stewart. It's cleared off and gets over the blue. Potosha and Calgin will race back. Changing with Redding and Connor May. There's somebody behind the play who's lost his steal. 
St. Norbert can't enter. It's a delayed off sides. Wow, what a bad break. Liam Fraser lost his steal and he was still stuck in the offensive zone. St. Norbert couldn't enter. That's so unlucky. The steal is in the back of the net behind Stewart. I don't know how it happened, but that's just unbelievably unlucky for St. Norbert. Connor May intercepts and clears. Good shift from him as he'll take to the bench. 23 seconds left to go in the power play for St. Norbert. Skating in his Lindstrom. Moved over. Save from Stewart. On the two on one. Jumps across the crease. We have seen it many of times now that St. Norbert's able just to get off the zone entry on the power play and get good scoring chances off of it. Stewart read that one perfectly, sliding over, and the puck found his chest. It has been solid so far. 3.21 left to go in the third period and 15 seconds left in the St. Norbert power play. For those, those of you just tuning in on the Adrian College Sports Network, Alex Herman and Tyler Ackerman right here to bring you all the action of this NCAA quarterfinal matchup. The Bulldogs and the Green Knights of St. Norbert College. A clearing attempt gets all the way down. That will kill off the final seconds of the penalty. Waiting to return to the surface is Adenier. Given the green light, he's back out on the ice. Stewart, paddle down, plays it. Skims it high off the glass. Point shot goes wide. Garvey making some glances over to the bench, waiting for the signal, likely to get off for the extra attacker. And there's a glove save from Stewart, but not out, without some extra action after the whistle. Curtis Hammond getting in the mix of things with Ben Loretto. Now Herms, 2.50 left on the clock. You have an offensive zone draw. If you're the St. Norbert uh, head coach, are you going to pull the goalie now or are you waiting a little bit longer? You know, to be honest, I, I don't think there's really a wrong answer because you're going to get an extra attacker regardless. Your net's going to be empty. You risk it at any time that it can be iced all the way down. So we may see a couple more seconds of even strength, and I'm sure in a few short moments this will go to six on five, but five seconds ticking off of that play, 2.45 remaining in the third. Shots almost even, 32 to 31. Earlier in the game, it was a lot more lopsided in favor of the Adrian College Bulldogs, but the Green Knights have really clawed their way back into this one. Loretto trying to scoop it up. Gets a one-handed touch. Transitions to the top. That's a backhander blocked by the knee of Adinier. Locked in the corner. Loretto gets it off to May. Now playing it to the point. Stepping in is May to get it out. He's able to do it. This will be sent back in. Green Knights with new defenseman and offenseman as Stewart stopped it behind the crease. Adinier with a pass up for Heinz. This will get all the way down. Garvey forced to play it. Summers was trailing in. And Strand got knocked into the back of the net. Here's Redding stepping in, flips it over. Heinz fires and fans. It's kept going by Redding. Move down low. Now to the opposite flank. Kudo strings it for Summers. He's tied up along the wall by Strand. Pressure really hard. Summers gets on top of his man and Strand. Garvey will get the signal. Net is now empty. Six on five situation. 120 left to go in the third period. Bulldogs looking to advance to the Frozen Four with a win here tonight. Waning last couple of seconds here in the third period. It's poked off the boards. Heinz with a backhand all the way down. It doesn't go and it's icing with 102. You imagine that there might be a timeout coming as well. You see some of the Green Knights gathering in front of the bench area already. Fans on their feet at the AIA. Everybody loves it. 
Saturday showdown. And there's the timeout with 102 left to go in the third period. Timeout is taken by the visiting St. Norbert Green Knights. We'll step away just for a second and return with the final minute of this third period. You're watching NCAA Playoff Hockey on the Adrian College Sports Network. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school, it's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Welcome back inside the Arrington Ice Arena. St. Norbert taking a timeout with 102 remaining here in the third period. Net is empty, they trail by one. Bulldogs ahead four to three. Alex Herman and Tyler Ackerman, happy to have you here with us this evening on the Adrian College Sports Network. Quarterfinals of the NCAA Tournament winner to the Frozen Four in Hartford, Connecticut after the conclusion of this game. Six on five situation developing. We'll take the draw on the offensive end of the Green Knights. Huge opportunity for Swade to try and win it back. Half wins it there, Kudo. Sending it down, doesn't get out. Murphy bounces it off the boards, needs to speed ahead. It's Deeks who's right there, and it's icing. We might get a change in the call, or it looked like it was going to be for a second. I thought that was going to be tied up because both men were shoulder to shoulder. But no is the decision. We'll take the draw right back where we just took it, 52.6 left to go in the third. Hunter Garvey on the bench for the extra attacker, six on five. Swade in the circle again. This time doesn't win it. Up to the point in Deeks. To the left hash, now down low. Now in front, pad save from Stewart. Scramble, it's loose. Where is it? Covered up, no whistle yet. Finally, it's blown down. Stewart sprawled out in the blue paint, sits on top of it. They were digging and digging away at it. It was a real nifty move. I don't know who it was, but they went behind the net, acting like they were going to go on the other side and dish the puck back from where they were coming. Had Stewart a little bit confused, but he was still able to get the pad on it and to make the great save. Swayed in the dot again with Frazier. Murphy trying to force it out. Frazier takes a tumble on the circle. Finally regaining his footing. I think his steal is out again. Frazier's lost his steal for a second time. It's five on five in zone. Finally they make changes. Swade forces it out. He'll play it low. Does he have room for the empty net? No, he can't fire it yet. 15 seconds left. Murphy scores! Empty netter, 5-3. And that ices it! The celebration has begun! This all starts from Swade's resilience in the defensive zone. Is able to chase it down and then all five Norbert's players are watching him. Murphy right in front of the net takes a slap shot to end this game off. A two goal lead with 15.1 seconds left to go in the third period. The Bulldogs are right there from making the long trip out east. It's unbelievable, Herms. Unbelievable. All right, last 15. Summers in the middle. It's played back for Snar. Snar through his feet. It's cleared down. Here's Summers racing his way in. Will likely go to tie up. He does. It's played by Lindstrom. Horn sounds. The Bulldogs are heading back to the Frozen Four. 
It's three straight years. Elation on the ice. Adrian College will send the Green Knights back over their drawbridge to their castle out west. They knock them out and will continue their quest for a national championship. What a game. Cannot ask for much more from these two great programs. It was back and forth all night long and the Bulldogs just got the better of this one in 60 minutes. They win it five to three. And looking over on the Norbert side, this should see them all cheering on their seniors as this will be their last game played. And the Adrian College fans up at their feet, all clapping. This place is going nuts, Herms. What a scene. This game could not have been better. Semifinals now slated in the bracket. It's gonna be Adrian College facing off against the hosting Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut next week, March 21st. No official time yet. Pack your bags. Season's not done yet for the Adrian College Bulldogs. My goodness, Tyler. What a crazy game, Herms. We had the first period, 15 seconds in, had a goal. Bulldogs climbed back to make it 1-1, and then that absolutely ridiculous second period that had all the plays, all the highlights, and the third period only saw one goal, and it was Murphy with the empty netter. While we await the stick taps at center, we'll read off the scoring summary for this one. Early on in the first period, 14 seconds, Carter Hotman got things going, made it 1-0 Green Knights. Amsball to follow at 8-18. And we'll take a pause as Bulldog players saluting their crowd. Sticks raised, hands clapping. Game recognizes game. Looking towards the center. There you see it. The official ticket to the Frozen Four. Captain John Calgen with the sticker. Can't see it from here, but we'll tell by the reaction. We wait for it, and there it is. Bulldogs heading back to the Frozen Four three straight years, looking to get to the top of the mountain. Nonetheless, we continue with the summary. 2.55 in the second, it was Matt Kudo, made it two to one dogs. Shortly after at the 6.36 mark, Zach Heinz on the power play to make it 3-1. And this is where things really got interesting. Carter Hotman got his second of the game at 18.28 to make it three to two. And at 18.42, it was Adam Stacho on the power play with a rip that tied things up. And when you thought it couldn't get crazier, 1958 in the third period. Two seconds left on the clock. It was Riley Murphy who made it four to three and ultimately the game winner. Only one goal in the third period. The second of the night and the empty netter to ice it from Riley Murphy at 1946. The final score reads five for the Adrian College Bulldogs and three for the St. Norbert Green Knights. Any closing thoughts, Tyler? 
we talked about a little bit of unpredictableness. And that second period had it all. And going into the third period, we talked about if anything would be like the second period we were in for a game. And it wasn't like the second period, but it was a defensive battle through and through. And Adrian was able to show off why they had a ticket for the national, for the semifinals. Bulldogs to the Frozen Four. We mentioned it earlier. We'll meet the hosting Trinity College in Hartford on the 21st of March next week. Still no winner in the Hobart and Curry game. They're in overtime. Slate tied up at three apiece, but Utica has advanced officially. They beat Plymouth State four to one. So we await the last team for the Frozen Four, but we do know that the Adrian College Bulldogs are moving on. What a game from the Arrington Ice Arena. Cannot ask for much more. And from all of us up here in the booth, thank you so much for tuning in. Alex Herman and Tyler Ackerman signing off for the final game from the Arrington Ice Arena in the 2023-2024 campaign. You've been watching and listening to the NCAA playoffs on the Adrian College Sports Network. Continue to take pride and learn from Asim Han's leadership today. And the slam. 161 years of commitment to harnessing the power of creativity, ingenuity, community, and academic excellence. I believe that if you get your degree here, the world is going to feel like shrinking to you.